Um, before I begin, I would like to offer my condolences and those of our team that who are here about the tragic passing of Mrs. Hernandez, uh, resident Holyoke, last week. We're very sorry. Uh, I will go through a couple of slides and then uh, turn it over to Mayor Garcia to speak. Um, to speak. Uh, dur during tonight's presentation, we will discuss the project background, some existing issues in the project area, and explore potential opportunities and tools for improvements. The purpose of the meeting is to inform the public of the project and solicit feedback to help us develop our design. Um, on this slide, uh, it is uh, you see our Mass DOT's diversity and civil rights state statement. If you are interested to learn about it, uh, please feel free to visit the website that is on the screen. Before I begin, uh, in you know, we begin the details. I would like to introduce the panelists and those who help with the project who are st sitting here. Uh, we have uh, Paula Simmons, Laura Hanson, and Kate Mesdell, all from uh, District Two office. Uh, Pam Marquise from our Right Away Bureau, and Kayla Souza, a meeting um, producer, and uh, Dan Rick Ricottas. Close enough. <laughs> <laughs> Our highway. I hurry this. She so I wrote it here. <laughs> uh, uh, from the city of Holyoke, we have Mayor Joshua Garcia. Welcome, Mayor. And Aaron Vega, the Director of Office of Planning and Economic Development. And there are many others who sit among us uh, from the city. We really thank for your help with this organizing this meeting for us. Uh, from Mass DOT Design Consultant for this project, GPI, we have uh, Zach Wasmuth and Caroline Reidish. We also have Adriana Santiago and Hector Santiago uh, at the corner. And I would like now to turn it over to Mr. Mia, if you'd like right. to say the words. Great. Right. No, thank you so much. I'll just say what I can. I do want to just quickly recognize uh, our Ward 1 City or two city councilor Carmen Ocasio who's here and uh, you know this project is going through the Ward 1 and Ward 2 corridor and um, you know and, and although it's in the immediate neighborhood area here it has an impact for everybody that lives in the city and so it was important and critical that we try to get as much um, voices as we can and this will not be the only time there will be many more opportunities as we engage because this is going to be a couple years process which I'm sure we're probably going to get an update on a timeline or whatnot yes. but just out of curiosity who has a business who's here that has a business on the high in, in, in Maple Corridor so, who here lives within these corridors along high in Maple in the area downtown all right great so this project yes today's my birthday <laughs> and, um, it's also, more importantly, my 10-year wedding anniversary. Uh, but I'm here because this project, I gotta say, is important. But just like any project, there's obviously, uh, as good and positive as it may be, sometimes there's concerns. Parking, you know, how quickly people travel up and down, safety. Um, you know, uh, protected bike lanes, whether they're included or not. Uh, we want to be sure that the design, the look, and the feel is um, uh, adaptive to our downtown uh, historic environment and so forth. And so, although this is great, I want to make sure that folks get an opportunity here to put your input, to be sure that, you know, you're sharing what you can to contribute so that we're coming out with an outcome that's going to be good for our downtown Holyoke. This, we haven't seen an, an investment like this in a long time besides besides our most recent MassWorks project that we've done in and around the South Holyoke area. But for our downtown, the heart of our city, the core of our city, responsible for uh, contributing to our greater economic development objectives, this is really going to transform how people think and feel about our city overall. There's this perception issue that we're constantly battling, and I remember just paving High Street the positive impact and excitement that created 
and that was just a what one and an inch overlay. <laughs> this here, we're talking about complete reconstruction of all of High and Maple, um, the intersections. It's about safety, mobility, to 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 de-escalate potentials like the recent tragic that we've had, you know, um, of of uh, the death of one of our residents and other accidents that have happened along the High and Maple corridor. So we can improve mobility that complete streets make it safe for biking walking and, and and all modes of transportation so i'm so happy to be here and continue to facilitate what we need to do it as a city to get this project moving forward and happy that you guys are here involved just know that this isn't this isn't the only moment i know sometimes we go to the meeting you get talked at and then you know you're like okay what's next like there'll be more opportunities for engagement coupled with our 20-year master planning process, comprehensive planning process that we're going to be kicking off very soon. Also on March 7, we have our downtown parking management study presentation that's going to be so we can improve downtown parking. And you know, I know it's confusing. I know there's a lot of complaints and concerns around how parking is done downtown, and we're looking at transforming that too. And so these are just some of the, the, the changes that we're trying to bring into our city, in our downtown, to make, make things a little bit more functional, much safer, much more welcoming and inviting, so that we can continue to um, cultivate a city that we all know and love, and, and being able to show it off to the rest of the, the region. Uh, the folks here are going to go over and do their thing, but, you know, just like you, if you're not thinking what I am, they're outsiders. They don't know much about the city of Holyoke as much as you guys do and this is where you guys come in so yeah. they're going to share the, share a little bit about this where we are the process and off, obviously seek some input areas of concern opportunity maybe ideas you might have so that as we go forward we're making sure that we're cultivating a plan that is conducive to what we know Holyoke is so um, with that being said thank you guys so much thank you Mr. Mayor. thank you for coming Thank you. Up front. Come on down. Front row. Yes, please. <laughs> and there are some additional seats on the corner. If you want to grab some. <laughs> You're a closer personal, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. The notice of the public, this public information meeting appeared in the Holyoke Sun on, the February, on February 16th and 23rd, and in the whole, uh, Springfield Republican on February 14th and 21st. The meeting information were posted on the Mass DOT website and advertised on our social media. The meeting has been posted on the City of Holyoke website share on the city social media, included on the Office of Planning and Economic Development newsletter, shared through TDI, Business Association and Chamber, as well as through individual flyers handout. Uh, this slide provides an overview of the topics that we'll be, discuss we'll be discussing this, uh, this, at this presentation. We will start by going over the project location, providing some background on the project. From there, we'll jump into the project goals and design considerations. Review, um, review some of the existing challenges and potential opportunities and tools for improvements. Finally, we will re uh, review a tentative schedule and then break up into an open house a session to hear your feedback and ideas. Please keep in mind that project we are presenting is still in preliminary project development stage. We welcome your feedback and uh, to help us improve future uh, options for the design. All of your questions and comments will be taken into consideration during as we advance the design. This slide shows the project, project location. The immediate part project area is highlighted in red and uh, includes both High and Maple Street from South Street to Layman Street. The project includes two and a half, 2.4 miles of roadway, 33 intersections, and eight, 18 of which are um, traffic, uh, traffic controls. We will jump now to, uh, for a, re a, re a recap of the history of the project. 
Um, in terms of the history, a project, a small project was initiated in 2011 on High and Maple Street. The original project scope was solely focused, focused on traffic improvements at in, <coughs> an individual intersection as well, and was brought up to 25% design in 2011. In 22, um, we, with close coordination with the city staff, initial project was re-envisioned to include more extensive scope with emphasis on holistic safety improvements along High Street and Maple Street corridors. In 2023, a new, new roadway project was initiated to look at comprehensive improvements to High and Maple Streets. With this larger project scope defined, traffic analysis was performed to start our understanding of the dynamic of these two corridors. Additionally, the city of Holyoke performed some roadway resurfacing to address the short-term concerns of the pavement conditions. As we enter 2024, we are here to re-engage with the community, to get your feedback on issues, concerns, and potential improvements to help us begin developing conceptual design for these two corridors. As we begin to develop conceptual designs on the project, we want to make sure we consider all the existing plans and policies. These plans and policies include the Holyoke Bike Network Plan, Holyoke Downtown Parking Study, Holyoke Complete Street Policy and Prioritization Plan, the Mass DOT Healthy Transportation Policy, including Complete Streets Guidelines, and the Mass DOT Vulnerable Road User Safety Assessment. Um, the next slide, we will talk about what we, uh, you know, what we want to accomplish as a result of this project. Uh, the following needs and goals have been identified as key components of this project. These goals include the prioritization and safety for all vulnerable user, users, spe specifically those walking, biking, and using transit. Improving access for all users. Initiating tr transformative change in and creating a gateway to downtown Holyoke. Limit limiting impact to on-street parking for downtown businesses and residents living along, the, the, along this, these streets, and engaging with public to solicit feedback to help import, inform our design, which is why we are here tonight. To set the stage for typical, a type of improvements that can be uh, implemented as a part of this project, we would like to highlight some key design considerations. Especially the project in, should include a complete street design approach by providing safe and accessible accommodation for all roadway users, including those walking, biking, uh, using transit, and driving. A process of intersection control if, improve, uh, evaluation, referred to as ICE, will be utilized to determine the best options for safe and effective operation at intersection. These options may include traffic signals, stop signs, roundabout, <coughs> among others. Additionally, we will uh, look at curb, curbside use, including on-street parking, loading for adjacent businesses, and bus stops location. As previously mentioned, accessibility to all users and ability will be an important consideration. Finally, streetscape elements to enhance the corridors, including things like lighting, tree, benches, bike racks, and similar will be considered. So this graphic shows it, um, key elements of, what, of a, what, a, what a complete street design is. It includes, and, and that's what we're uh, considering for our design. These elements include accommodation for all users by providing things like accessible sidewalks, dedicated bicycle facilities, transit accommodation, vehicle lines, um, safe pedestrian street crossing, and green space. And 
In the next slide, we will <coughs> review some of the existing conditions, including the data that have been collected along High and <coughs> Maple Streets, as well as some of the challenges that we have identified for consideration as we uh, evaluate potential improvements. I'm going to turn over to uh, turn this over to Caroline from GPI, our consultant, to to, to speak on that. Thank you, Shapar, and um, welcome everybody. Um, I'm just going to go over an overview of the existing conditions out here. So this is a is a diagram showing pedestrian volumes in the downtown area, with the red dots are the the highest ones, and you could see that it very much there is first of all a lot of pedestrians in the downtown, as you know. Um, and they are focused in the central area, you know, roughly between Sargent Street and Dwight Street, um, a little bit, you know, further away from the core. The volumes are a little lower, but there's a lot of pedestrian activity because there are so many things to walk to here. There's the Holyoke Transit Center, which is a major hub for pedestrians, the City Hall, the Public Library, you have a walk in health center. Uh, the elementary school, the Veterans Memorial Park, this library, uh, neighborhood food stores, and places of worship. So it, it is a walkable downtown with a lot of destinations, and that's a key consideration for the design. We also have daily bicyclist volumes, and both for the pedestrian and bicyclist volumes, we collected over 12 hours, so from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Um, so it's not a 24-hour collection, so you know, you'll see that there are a lot of bicyclists that are out here. The other thing to note is that we collected these um, bicycle counts in December when we would expect um, bicycling activity to be lower, wow. but we're still seeing you know, a lot of bicycling activity um, in the downtown area, particularly in the core, this area where all the uses are close together. and. Um, you know, there's no bicycle infrastructure. So people are biking, even though there's no bike lanes, no bike paths, it's, uh, it's not very safe, um, and, um, and in December. So, so that's, we're seeing some interesting takeaways on the bicycle volumes. Uh, we were given some transit boarding information from the PBTA. So this is, you know, a year's worth of data that is averaged. Um, over the over the days that they serve and we're also seeing significant um, boarding for transit in the area you can see the Holyoke Transit Center of course is the big focus of that activity in the big red circle but we're also seeing you know boardings along Maple Street so um, we're also seeing at Hampshire Street is another you know major place where people get on the bus and then also at Suffolk Street Sargent Street and um, Franklin Street and this is transit alighting, or so where people get off the bus, um, and that you know that has a different design consideration where people are waiting. There's you know there should be a shelter if it's a day like today um, to keep people you know out of the rain. People get off the bus more on um, High Street, and so that, you know that was also of interest um, with respect to the overall transit patterns in the area. And of course, a lot of people are getting off at the Holyoke Transit Center. Um, we also looked at vehicular traffic operations, so we grade uh, traffic operations at signalized intersections with a metric called level of service, which is a lot like um, it measures delay at a signalized intersection and we grade it like a letter grade that you get in school, A through F with A being free flowing. Uh, no delay and F being the most delay. So under existing conditions, you'll see all of the signalized intersections here in the downtown are level of service A or B. So you know that's a very high um, service. We also did a growth rate and projected 10 years into the future. So in 2034, we looked again at the vehicular operations on these intersections and it is very similar, all A and B at these intersections. So. What's telling us is that with the two-lane uh, configuration on these streets, on the two streets, that there is actually access capacity for vehicles. Um, we looked at crashes in the area. So this is a heat map of vehicular crashes. You can see the hot spots are kind of shown in yellow. 
Um, and so in this area, you can see how the crashes for vehicles are distributed through High and Maple Street corridor. There are a couple of high crash clusters for vehicles. Um, there is a top 200 crash cluster at Maple Street and Resnick Boulevard, another one at High Street and Cabot Street. So what that means is that statewide, these are somewhere in the top 200 intersections for crashes um, in Massachusetts as a whole. There's also a um, top 5% intersection at South and High Maple Street, and that's top 5% of crashes in the, the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission region. So there's a couple spots, and looking at this is important for us as we move forward thinking about how these streets should be redesigned. We also have crash um, information for what we call vulnerable users, which are primarily pedestrians and cyclists. Uh, we're very um, concerned about these crashes. They tend to have a much higher rate of injury or fatality, as we unfortunately um, learned last week down here. We have here another heat map where you can see the, you know, again, where the hot spots are in the area. We have two pedestrian crash clusters. Those are outlined in the map here. So those are focused in the High and Maple Street corridor between Hampshire Street and Cabot Street. And that means that, you know, in, again, the, the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission region, this area is among the top 5% of streets and intersections for pedestrian crashes. And there's another um, top 5% pedestrian crash cluster at High and Maple Street focused around the Appleton and Suffolk <coughs> intersections. We have also noted where there have been a couple of pedestrian crash fatalities um, in, in the Maple Street and High Street area. The most recent crash at Maple and Cabot Street. And then in 2015, there was a pedestrian fatality at High Street and Appleton Street. We are also aware that just beyond the project area on South Street, there was a recent pedestrian crash fatality as well. So all of this is you know, important for us to understand the causes of these crashes so that we can address and ameliorate this and make it safe for all users in the future. Some of the challenges that we know we have in this area with respect to pedestrian safety include inoperative pedestrian signals in some locations, um, pedestrians hit in the crosswalks by turning vehicles. So this happens sometimes when the um, green light is given both to the pedestrians and the vehicles at the same time. We call that concurrent signal phasing. And then if one is turning, sometimes they'll go fast around the corners, not aware that there's a pedestrian crossing in that location. Um, sometimes the visibility of pedestrians crossing in crosswalks is impaired by uh, parked cars that are too close to the crosswalks. And sometimes with two travel lanes, like we have on High and Maple Street, we have what's called a double threat uh, crash, where we have diagrammed here in the bottom, but you have you know two lanes of traffic, a pedestrian starting to cross in the crosswalk, the car on the right sees the pedestrian and stops, but another car is coming along in the other lane, and they, they're blocked, that's in their, um, that's in their um, blind spot. They can't see the pedestrian. They don't know that's why the car stopped. The pedestrian can't see the coming car, and so you have a crash. And, and that is um, a very dangerous crash type in, in a two-lane road scenario. At, and this would be primarily at uncontrolled crossings, not signalized crossings. We also have challenges of accessibility in the area. Um, the sidewalks and crossings will all meet Americans for Disabilities Act standards. You can see here in this photograph, we have a nice, a pretty wide sidewalk, but a piece of signal equipment right in the middle, right there. which would make it very difficult to get around that if you were in a wheelchair or in a walker, and that's a difficulty. Some other issues might include the cross slopes of the sidewalks are too steep for, for people in a wheelchair. The pedestrian ramps need to have the detectable warning panels for people who have low vision. Um, we also have some sidewalk gaps along Resnick Boulevard and a lack of pedestrian sil uh, signals in the Resnick Boulevard <coughs> intersections also. 
With respect to transit, um, the PVTA has some initiatives they're looking on, uh, looking at in the area, including consolidating stops to make the transit surface more efficient for people. Um, a high percentage of PVTA patrons do not have an alternative mode of transportation, so making the bus service as efficient and effective as possible um, is a priority. And to also improve shelters along the area where people are waiting for the bus. Um, in terms of street design concerns for bicyclists, there is no bicycle accommodations. There's no bike lanes or bike paths. So sometimes we see the bicyclists riding on the sidewalk, which creates concerns for pedestrians. Um, and as we saw in the previous slide, we do have a fair number of bicyclists in the downtown. So the next section, Zach is going to talk about what are some of the tools to address um, the challenges that I've just gone over. I'll turn it over to Zach. All right. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everybody. I'm Zach Wasmuth uh, with GPI. And as Carolyn just said, um, I'm going to jump into some of the tools that we um, that we have in the toolkit that can um, that can work on addressing some of the things that Carolyn brought up. So, one of the um, opportunities that we have for this is uh, what we call lane reduction. Uh, Maple and High Street, as Carolyn mentioned, both have um, a um, an excess capacity for vehicles. Um, so that means that this affords us the opportunity to look into maybe potentially reducing the number of lanes. And, um, and that um, kind of reduces the double threat um, diagram that Carolyn was talking about by um, eliminating that, um, the, the car passing and hitting a pedestrian in the crosswalk, which we want to avoid. It also presents the opportunity um, for, uh, to reallocate that space for improvements for, for things like transit, for biking, and even giving more uh, sidewalk space to pedestrians. So it kind of opens up some different opportunities. While, um, while still being able to maintain the vehicular capacity on the street. Um, another opportunity that we can look at is, um, you know, as, as Carolyn mentioned, there's some accessibility issues on the sidewalk. We showed that graphic with the, um, with the traffic control box right in the middle of the sidewalk. So making the, um, the sidewalk accessible for, to serve uh, users of all ages and abilities, folks in a wheelchair, folks pushing a stroller, um, you know, all those types of people, we want to make sure that we're accommodating everyone and having accessible sidewalks that they can clear, uh, easily access the downtown area. Um, another uh, tool that we um, would look at for a corridor that's like this would be um, bump outs or curb extensions. And as you can see pictured here, there's a, there's a bump out curb extension example at a, at a bus stop that happens to have a bus shelter and everything. But you can see here, um, this provides a shorter crossing distance for pedestrians. Um, it's less exposed time in, in the street for pedestrians that are trying to cross, so they're you know, um, less exposed to vehicular traffic. It also improves uh, visibility for both pedestrians to be able to see oncoming traffic and for vehicles and drivers that are approaching the intersection to see a pedestrian because they're kind of out and more visible. So these type of things really help to enhance and make crossings safer. Um, another project tool um, that we could look at for, for these corridors is uh, what we call a raised intersection or a raised crosswalk. And here we kind of bring the, the street level up to um, the sidewalk level. As you see here, the, the street and the sidewalk level are, are flush. These both kind of help to slow traffic because you got that little incline uh, and everything, so it kind of slows things down. And also, uh, you know, it increases the awareness that there would be a pedestrian crossing there, kind of brings some extra element to that. And it makes it a le little easier for pedestrians to cross because, you know, you don't have to go up and down with the ramp. You know, you're just kind of crossing <coughs> a flush crossing there. So that's another element that we could look at. Um, you know, we mentioned that there's some signalized intersections out there, so some, there are some tools um, that we can look at specifically for, um, for the traffic, for the signalized intersections. One of those would be potentially um, um, right turn on red restrictions. That would obviously, um, you know, when the walk signal's on and the light is red, that reduces the risk of a conflict of a, of a right turning vehicle and a pedestrian in the, in the crosswalk. Um, Another tool that we look at uh, for traffic signals is uh, a leading pedestrian interval, or an LPI, as it's noted here. And that sort of gives uh, pedestrians, if there is that um, concurrent phase with, with turning vehicles, before the, um, before the vehicles get the green light, the pedestrians get the walk signal for a couple seconds. 
and that gives them sort of a head start so that they're out in the crosswalk and they're seen so that when a vehicle's turning, they can see that there's a pedestrian there, not in their blind spot, and they would yield to the pedestrian. Uh, again, reducing the risk of those crashes. Um, another opportunity, as Carolyn mentioned, there are no um, you know, exclusive bicycle facilities out on High Maple Street today. So um, adding in some sort of bicycle facility, like a separated bicycle lane or on-street bike lane, like you see here on the, on the street, um, really provides uh, a bicycle accommodation for you know, riders of all ages and abilities. Um, and they're not competing with traffic or competing with uh, pedestrians and everything. They have their space to travel on the street. Um, another opportunity, again, as we're explo exploring uh, possibilities with the cross section and what might fit, um, and you know, coupled with the potential for lane reduction and that type of thing, is uh, exclusive bus lanes. Um, providing this type of uh, exclusive bus lane can help to improve the reliability of buses by giving them own lane to travel in. And that can particularly be effective during you know, peak uh, periods where there may be some heavier traffic and the, and the bus can kind of get through. It uh, doesn't get bogged down with the, with the general purpose traffic. Um, and those can also be like a shared uh, bus bike lane as well, like you see here in the, in the photo example. Um, another opportunity is kind of taking a look at the curbside use along the corridor. Um, and you know, having designated loading zones. I mean, when we were driving up today, uh, we happened to drive by a business, and uh, there was a truck in one of the travel lanes uh, loading for that particular business. That's not uncommon in a, you know, a downtown area like this. So you know, just thinking about that and thinking how you know potential of what we might do with the cross section, kind of thinking about the right mix of curbside use out there and in balancing that with some loading zones, some parking area for businesses, parking area for residents, and just trying to understand where that can be. There can also be time of day restrictions um, specifically on those loading zones. So it's like, you know, depending on when deliveries and stuff are happening, loading happens in the morning and that opens up to parking in the evening and that type of thing. So, you know, understanding the, the use and who's using the parking space and the need, we can kind of allocate the curbside use that exists to, to function better. Um, and then finally, just kind of an overarching uh, tool that we have, and a lot of the things that I mentioned before kind of contribute to that, but you know, the general um, principle of traffic calming, which is really just kind of uh, implementing some constructed streetscape improvements that kind of slow vehicles down and just um, you know, still allow traffic to flow efficiently, but just kind of have that overall effect. You know, these can be things like maintaining on-street parking, adding street trees, and you know, sizing the, uh, the, the street and the lane widths appropriately so that they don't encourage you know, faster speeds. You know, right now, I think on um, uh, High Street, the, the travel lanes are like 15 feet wide, so that's kind of encouraging to drive a little bit faster, maybe able to really narrow those things down and, and things of that nature. So um, with that, those are some of the tools just to kind of get your, uh, you know, based on the stuff that Carolyn was saying and some things that we've been thinking about, but we'd love to, you know, hear your feedback on these as we get into the discussion portion and everything and also hear about other ideas that you guys may have. And with that, I'll hand things back over to Shapar. Yes, thank you, Zach. Talk about next steps. Yes. So what are next steps? Tonight and next week on um, March 6th at our virtual uh, meeting, we will be getting initial public input on the project to, con to confirm existing challenges and explore potential design opportunities. Then we will take the feedback and the data that have been collected to start putting together some preliminary design concepts to, sh to share for farther feedback as we entered into the summer and fall. From there, we plan to work towards a preferred design concept, sometimes in winter of 24 to spring of 2025. Once preferred design concept has been decided, we will work towards advancing a detailed design <coughs> while working with the city and the Metropolitan Planning Organization to program the project in the statewide transportation program for bits in construction. Uh, we would like to thank the following organization for their continuous support. The City of Holyoke, the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, the Chicopee and Springfield RMB Service Centers, the Holyoke Greater Chamber, 
and the Stop Growth Center for Independent Living. Your feedback is very important to the success of the project. We would like you to we would like to hear your input. As we wrap up the presentation, we will be transitioning into the meeting into an open house format to get your feedback and ideas. <coughs> we would like to hear what existing challenges you have experienced in this area. Additionally, we would like to hear your ideas for improvements and safety improvements, mobility improvements. <coughs> We encourage you to visit the presentation boards around the room to discuss, the share, is discuss and share feedback. We have divided the presentation boards into <coughs> categories of walking, biking, transit, and then driving, parking, and loading. Please feel free to, to visit the boards with topics that are of interest to you. We have also prepared uh, copies of a survey that you can uh, fill out tonight and submit, or you can send a mail to us, or actually it's online posted, and you can go and using the QR code um, on the screen, you can actually fill it online. <coughs> In addition to f providing feedback at uh, this meeting and taking our survey, we encourage you to put to reach out to us with written comments. Emailing us on the address shown on the screen is preferred. We, uh, we request that uh, to please uh, complete the survey and send in your comments by May 31st. Please be sure to include the project file number 613320 on the subject of your email. The QR code shown on this um, slide also takes you to the MassDOT project management web um, email address. So flee, please feel free to scan it. Um, this includes our formal presentation for High and Maple Street Carter Enterprise. Um, we want to open the, uh, the uh, present open this meeting to you um, <coughs> to hear any um, you know key comments and information you'd like to share with us. But we also want to, at the same time, leave some time, because I, I think it's important to walk through these maps and be able to show us what, you know, what area of concerns and um, <coughs> recommendations you have from, from us. So, from us. so uh, if anyone has comments or questions, please raise. Yes, gentleman in yellow, please. Did you consider conversion to two-way traffic for uh, High and Maple, and is that on the table at this point? Zach, can you take that, please? Sure. Um, just repeat the question. Oh, yeah. Um, the question was, uh, did we consider two-way traffic on both High, high and Maple? Um, we're still in the preliminary design phase right now, um, so we've, we've taken the traffic data and kind of explored some things. One of the things that we did do early on was we did uh, explore what uh, a lane reduction and what that impact might be for a level of service and everything. Um, so it's something that's been part of the discussion. I don't think it's necessarily been fully discounted yet, but it, you know, it's just um, we're trying to gauge what the, what the most appropriate um, thing would be for these streets. You know, balancing that with, of course, what you can get with, with these various cross sections. I think High Street is 70 feet wide and uh, Maple Street 60 feet wide. So they're, you know, approximately the same, but they have different uh, cross sections. So it's like, can we fit a bike facility in here? Can you fit two travel lanes and everything? So that's certainly part of the ongoing conversation. I don't think there's any options necessarily have been discounted yet, but just, yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah. <coughs> Vadim uh, Tolchinsky with the High Street Business Association. Um, first of all, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, I really think this has the potential to change the face of downtown and Holyoke along with it. So really, thank you so much for everyone's effort. Um, we want to stand up and champion particularly two of the things that uh, you spoke. They're all great ideas. Um, number one, uh, reducing the driving lanes down to one. We think there's far too much capacity for the cars and that in turn is making it such that people are often going 40, 50 miles an hour, sometimes more, um, despite any travel uh, speed limit limitations. And then secondly, 
We want to champion as loudly as we possibly can a dedicated bike lane with as much protection as we can put because we've seen in other places in this city and others <coughs> simply painting uh, you know, a green line on the pavement will not work. Uh, people park on it, people drive on it with absolutely no uh, recognition for, uh, for bikes. So if we could speak for any of those two, it would be for those two. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Please, yes, go ahead. Uh, Dave Yost, Hold Up Tax Service. Uh, first, the question, these slides are available on the... Um, the They're not, but we'll post it on our website. The, the same, website. yes. Same place that you registered for. No, you didn't register, actually. Yeah. I'll find the way, I'll make sure we put it on the Holyoke website. Yes. So, and I put can, on the city yeah. website. So that way it's easy to find so people don't feel like they need to figure out how to map yeah. the state sure. website. Yeah. So, yeah. So, it's, so it's easy. We'll get it up there. Yeah. yeah. And, and my, st my kind of statement suggestion is for the, um, the traffic signals, people tend to ignore those and will turn on red, so perhaps a uh, you know, four-way red block signal might be more, more effective. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. And by the way, before we go, there is a virtual meeting next week at the same time on the 6th, and it is posted on our website. You can attend if you'd like, or uh, tell your friends that who ha weren't able to make it tonight to please attend. Yes, who was next? Damaris. I, <clears throat> from Olio, I've been around all these streets. I love the idea, everything you guys have, it's great. Loading is a big problem on High Street that causes people to swerve, people crossing, that's a big thing. I also think, um, like the loading signs, the cross, the bike, but, 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 Holyoke, I'm from Holyoke, I've been here 20 years. I'm looking ahead for 20 more years of the same people that live here, the families that are coming, the people that are coming into Holyoke, you know, you're, we're giving these people a nice street clean, Maple and High Street to just speed down, get off the highway. I could see it right now happening at eight, nine o'clock at night, and now with a nice clean, clean, I could just see the speeding happening. I personally think speed bumps is a major thing. I know it's a major street, but the way Holyoke is, I personally think even on high street speed bumps will be nice it'll be a way for people to go slower you get to enjoy looking at the stores you get to see what's happening instead of going 40 miles down trying to get to lyman street to turn and either go to sahali or just go wherever you're going so <clears throat> you got to take in consideration just giving hold of these nice streets with nothing to stop anybody but two lights except one lane <laughs> reducing to one lane but you can't do one lane on high street there's no way because of course, um, sure, of course. business businesses will lose out i'm already thinking of the effect this will have on the businesses on high street all i'm saying is you guys need to think about adding a little bit more i live um towards homestead and we have speed bumps put up put by the park it's amazing why because people are speeding up that street and you can't see when you're taking corners, or I don't know why, but it's amazing. There's speed bumps by the school. <clears throat> There's speed bumps on neighborhoods around here. The neighborhoods have yeah. complained so much that they put speed bumps. So it's just an idea. I know it's not the fanciest, but it's a small town. We don't need, we could go slow and check out this town and see what's in the town. And that's what I think. 20 years ago, they were speeding down High Street. 20 years ago, 20 years from now, they're gonna be speeding down High Street even more with newer roads. When, when High Street was fixed, with that little one inch, we were so happy. And we see it, we be downtown, and I see the cars flying through, so it's just a consideration to take because I'm just scary of the speeding, and no matter what you put there, people will not be paying attention. So Great. take that in consideration. Thank you. Thanks, Damaris. I would just say that the whole, fo the primary focus of this project, project for Bastot is to improve mobility safety. So. You know, obviously making it look nice, nice infrastructure, modernization, and other things, those are all secondary, but the primary focus, and when we say mobility safety, we mean all modes of transportation, as you heard, walking, you know, um, a wheelchair accessibility, uh, whether it's biking or whatever the case. And so it's not like we're looking to tr put a new road so people can, it's about traffic calming and putting the necessary visuals and other, you know, with, with, the, with the bumps, and I'm sure there's gonna be raised crosswalks and whatnot, yeah. to traffic calm so that we can achieve the mobility safety. Because, you know, to your point, 
if we do this only to allow the next generation of users to speed up, then we didn't achieve the number one goal in this whole project. So that's why, to your point, and, and we saw a lot of, that was really good actually, the data you shared, things mm -hmm. I didn't know was going on. You know, obviously there's real concerns and those are the things that we're trying to address in this. So what you're saying is like the top goal here and not just a new shiny street where people can uh, yeah. That's the biggest down. concern because you, you gave us a little shiny string. They're already acting up. So I well, <laughs> uh, it wasn't like, mobility I'm safety. Saying. That was uh, to save your car from getting a uh, you know, <laughs> tire <laughs> replacement. Yeah. <laughs> so to <the> suit. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think you had to hear. Oh, yes. Hi. Hi. I'm a local resident and business owner. And I uh, definitely agree with what she said. And I'm, from your presentation, I was also going to highlight the raised crosswalks could be a good fit. Um, I love what the mayor was saying about prioritizing safety for pedestrians. Obviously so necessary. I love the complete streets design principles. And as a business owner, I'm curious about parking reduction. It seems like that's a must to do some of the complete streets and that's fine as long as we can mitigate as much as possible. So I was curious if you guys have any information about mitigating measures when parking is reduced. Are there any perks that maybe I hadn't thought of, like if you have to park farther away, you you know, you see other businesses or is it is there something that you can share around what it looks like when there's less parking? Because it seems like no matter what happens, that's whether it's lane reduction or bike lanes, parking's gotta some parking's gotta go. So mm -hmm. um, definitely support this happening, just a little bit concerned about that or how to mitigate it when it happens. Yeah. Are you gonna say something? I can me? say yeah. a couple okay. things about yeah. that. Yeah, so sure. We are, you know, very aware of how important on-street parking is to businesses. There's been studies about that, um, how much it also, you know, helps the pedestrian environment. You know, it's a buffer between the cars and where the pedestrians are. So there's a lot of benefits to it. In a downtown, you do want to have, you know, sort of a park and walk experience. So people, you know, park once and then walk to several shops. And so, you know, that can be achieved with public parking, so um, on-street parking being, you know, an important component, but there may be also municipal lots um, that are, you know, within the parking area, and that, that also really supports the businesses. So, um, you know, I guess at this point, we could just say that we're very mindful of how important mm -hmm. parking is to economic viability in a downtown, and that's, you know, definitely in our mind. I would love to learn about it just so I can field questions and know for my own benefit too what you were saying about it. it's good to be able to park farther away mm -hmm. if you don't think it is. Because you can it's, walk. Yeah, yeah, I know. So people want to always park at the door. It's shocker. human nature. It's a, it's a, <laughs> yeah. The improvements that we're going to see, their culture changes, is change in the mindset. Like, for example, and I'm going to say it, you know, we saw that the project started as early as 2011. Mm -hmm. And there were various reasons why that one didn't go through, but one major thing, believe this or not, was that there was this thought that High and Maple does not need traffic lights. Now, when you think of that, that sounds crazy, right? Like we're talking about improving safety, you want to improve traffic lights. I said it was crazy until I learned that, you know, there are other creative measures um, that you can install that apparently traffic lights make people speed faster. Um, and the idea would be to install, be creative with the infrastructure that forces people that, to pay attention or there's gonna be, you know, you're gonna hit a curb or something or you're gonna hit that speed hump a little hard and, and hit the bottom of your car, whatever the safety measures get implemented. Downtown parking, we, we all love in Western Mass to park right in front of where we're trying to get to, right? And that's a huge thing. You know, it's not uncommon to park 30 seconds more away from where you're trying to get to, or about a minute more away. Uh, I know the planning office <coughs> does think about that often, like, you know, there's parcels downtown that we've talked about potentially converting uh, into more parking space, considering that, like, you know, if we're reducing parking spaces downtown, how can we be creative with what we have so that we're making available more parking spaces, <coughs> not necessarily on the street, but like, you know, you know, there's other opportunities there. And on March 7, there's a presentation of a consultant that was procured to do 
this whole study on understand there's a science when it comes to downtown parking overall and so we're looking forward to continue to work with them in tandem with this project so that we're being mindful to the concerns to your concern and making sure we're being not only mindful and creative and so we can keep up with that parking need that people desire so. and still get still get the product right we still want this yeah. and meet the other concerns at the same time yes thank you um, Carlos Pena, too many things to label to say where I'm from or what I do here in the city, but um, just wanted to point out, uh, I didn't see any like trash receptacles, and I know we're trying to keep things clean so that people could be seen, but in the future, I know that the city right now is not trying to put trash receptacles in, in these areas, but being a, a city um, and being that there's a lot of trash in the city and in the future there might be receptacles or might find a way to have receptacles. Are we taking consideration where those would be at in order to be out of the way? I don't know if it's just gonna be one receptacle or, or cycles and you know, just thinking about the future and what the city is going to be doing with the trash that is uh, in our city and how we could <coughs> minimize that trash in the future. How, what are we looking for receptacles and how the receptacles are being placed or where they're being placed so that the street could still be clean, pedestrians could still be seen, and accidents don't happen, but we still have these receptacles so the city could be clean. Carlos, that's a great, great, great concern. These guys are focused on downtown mobility safety. Yeah. However, to your point, we do have Vadim, who's one of the key leaders of the Downtown Business uh, Association, as well as um, Aaron, before I pass it to him and, and, and share um, what they're doing to improve trash downtown, I do want to acknowledge Carl, who's our DPW director, who's here today, who's been the key facilitator around implementing the city-issued trash receptacles that's yeah. tremendously improved the trash situation downtown. And also we'll be meeting with the uh, sewer department um, to step up their game around street sweeping. And also Carl stepped up the schedule around you know how often the fat truck is going up and down high in maple um but the dean the trash receptacles give it a minute spiel on that yeah absolutely so um the the city actually uh by zoning rights and um doesn't pick up trash or doesn't have the power to pick up trash in commercial areas so where we're trying to step in and with massive support from uh mass development and tbi i don't know kevin is here kevin's right here oh. Sorry, Kevin. <laughs> Everybody, uh, thank Kevin over here. Um, we're, we're getting grants and we're trying to build up uh, support uh, amongst the business owners to take on that responsibility ourselves. So uh, in the next little bit, we're gonna be rolling out uh, trash receptacles up and down High Street uh, as a pilot project along with dedicated pickups. So hopefully in the next six to 12 months, uh, we're gonna be actually seeing many more receptacles and trying to figure out a way to um, use them in the best possible way and to maintain them into the future. I think yes. Hi, I'm Beth Berg, I'm a resident. I'm wondering if Mass DOT has any research on what specifically slows people down. Is there any one thing that is at the top of the list? <laughs> <laughs> because I think the speeding, not just in Hoyoke, is out of control, I think traffic lights and street signs are merely suggestions now yeah. and i think that if people can just slow down i don't know there was a i think a danish study that said the only thing that worked for them was to reduce the speed limit everywhere but i didn't know if mass dot had any done any studies on that we have to do you want to talk about that actually there are various design elements that we can do, like narrowing the lane. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, I, I think some of that stuff that I was talking about before when we're talking about the traffic calming, these are physical improvements that um, you'd implement on the street. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're not wrong in that, you know, so you, you, could, you could put up a stop sign whether people, you know, stop there or not, that type of thing. So it, it's that stuff I was talking about. When you have a 15-foot wide lane, it kind of doesn't feel like you need to be going at a, at a slower speed. When you start getting that a little bit more narrow, it just feels like, you know, that you should be going a little bit slower. So when you start introducing a combination of these elements and consistently along a corridor, 
that's what you see when you start implementing the, the raised crossings, the raised intersections, the bump outs, the, the more narrow lanes, having the on-street parking. It just feels like a place that you, you know, it doesn't feel like the highway where you, they do have those wide lanes and it's, and it's free. It feels like a downtown area. You got to slow down. You got to look for pedestrians crossing, all of that type of thing. So it's these physical actual improvements in this toolkit of, um, of, you know, traffic calming that, yeah, are definitely, you know, things that have been implemented elsewhere and everything that definitely encourage slower speeds. I'll just say yeah. it has been studied. Yeah. There is a website that's done by the Institute of Transportation Engineers called the Traffic Calming E-Primer, and they give you sort of, through various studies they've done, the range of miles per hour reduction for various traffic calming approaches. Because I know Northampton did that, and I know that those bumps, they slow you down, man, because if you don't, <laughs> Speed humps are, they are, um, you know, they, just as an aside, you know, they, they are effective, but they you have to use them selectively. You have to consider emergency vehicle routes, you have to consider transit routes, you have to, um, some people, well, that's they make five, noise if there's neighbors, you know, people hit brakes, people like bottom out. So it's like they're very effective and, you know, they're, so it's like, you know, but it's a, you know, it's a, it's, like, there's not a silver bullet, you know? <laughs> Everything has to be kind of fit into a context and, you know, using combinations of features. DJ. So, I have a couple questions. I have a list of questions. Can I fill out the questions or the suggestions on the survey? Oh, a lot yes. Of time? Yep. yes. Yep. Secondly, so when I clicked on the um, QR code to see what the plan was so I could develop comments, uh, it showed a $15 million budget. But and then watching the slide presentation, it's not really telling me exactly what you're going to do or what we're talking about to change based on your suggestion, what we might suggest. Do you actually have the concrete plan of, you know, what type of traffic lights you want to use, what type of walk signal you want to use, what type of bump outs you're going to use? Do you have any of that in done yet, or are we still you're still waiting for us to tell you how we want it? Well, we have those information. We have looked at it. Uh, I know we've looked the, at a lot, but we didn't really say. DJ, currently they're in the very. This is the beginning early phase. phase. Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're not even. They're, they we're not in the. They're getting to the design, and before they come out and present that. Okay. Yeah. We'll that and then they yeah, and we don't want to have a project yeah. that we tell you what. We want, yeah, you agree. know, what we want to implement. We want to hear from you, so well, you're, you're happy at the end. Also say, this is what should be done. Of course, of do course, that. you're not. <laughs> we're engineers. We'll definitely design okay. it per. Um, okay. Did you want to say something? No, I was just going to say that we, you know, this is amazing, but we do have role plans of the uh, whole project area where you can mark up what you think is a good idea. We're certainly in the existing conditions phase, so we have traffic counts. We think we know what's going on, right. but as the mayor said, we are outsiders, so this is a part of our data collection. So after we get all of that, that's when we'll put everything on paper. So I think we generally have an idea of the direction we're headed in, um, but we really want to rely on public feedback before drawing any concepts up. Mr. O'Connor. Uh, yes, my name is Joe O'Connor. Uh, I'm not a fan of the roundabouts uh, due to two facts. Uh, they increase accidents, low impact accidents, and also it pushes pedestrians' disabilities down the street of uh, crosswalks, okay? That's my experience with them. Uh, ornamental traffic lights improve the city, make it look nice, putting all this uh, new stuff in the city. I thank you the state and the uh, federal government for coming in and taking an investment. But traffic lights don't have to be the silver pole with the silver arm going across. There's the ornamental ones. Springfield has them. Chickley has them. And other communities have them. They're very nice. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> oh, you didn't have a question? Mm. Did you have some questions? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I uh, thank you for coming all the way. I'm Nathan. I live in Holyoke blocks away from uh, Maple Street and uh, I volunteer one of the government boards. Um, I support the traffic coming measures for just to let you know about the context. Literally yes, yesterday okay. there was a very animated debate on the Holy Ghost community forum about how traffic coming measures are expensive and what you really need is more police enforcement. One <coughs> lady who suggested more traffic comes to Holy she got shouted down by a community member. He said that traffic comes uh, 
uh, slow down emergency vehicle response time so they shouldn't be there every single shoot flat. So I know there are a lot of views and emotions about this issue, but just letting you know, if once this starts going moving momentum, you're probably going <coughs> to face a lot of different um, viewpoints and cultural clashes. And, uh, but personally, I used to bike in Holyoke until it felt unsafe. So I think dedicated bike lanes are really great ideas. And a lot of people want to bike, but they don't bike because they don't feel safe. And people actually bike a lot even on safe conditions because that's the only form of transportation they got. So I think it really matters a lot. And uh, but lastly, I think uh, it's a different topic, but physical environment safety is very important. Um, I think actually when it comes to parking, there's a lot of parking spaces around downtown, including especially the suburb municipal lot. One of the reasons I understand it's not getting used or it's getting really underused is because if you've been to that municipal parking lot, it doesn't feel like, super safe because it's not lit very well. It's behind the back of a building. So the car I know got broken in a couple months ago. And I know it's a different topic, but uh, for this to really work harmoniously, uh, improving the physical safety, improving traffic, uh, improving trash, getting rid of the golf group inside to step over on Maple Street, I think it will matter. So yeah, thank you very much. And thank you. I hope, uh, this Questions. Yes. Yeah, we're going to take a couple more questions and because we want to all have an opportunity to walk there and really see the maps, the plans, and get your feedback there. Mr. Welch. Hi. Uh, Don Welch from Wyoming. Um, just two things, bike lanes. When I was working, I was a police officer, I used to be in a bike patrol. And a bike, having a bike lane next to a travel lane is one of the most dangerous things you can do. Um, you're going to get hit by a car. In Northampton, not so much last year, but previous two years, there was at least two or three pedestrian and bicyclist motorist accidents that, that resulted in fatalities. To have a designated bike lane off the roadway would be better because you got, you, you try going down Northampton Street here in Oyoke, Northampton, with um, the bike lane. You, you're going down there, you're right next to the traffic, and you got people going by to 30, 40 miles an hour. And you literally shake. Okay? And the other thing is, we can turn around and have all these measures and everything else, stop signs, lights, common areas. You need enforce, like everybody said here before. You have to change the mindset of the driver, knowing that they might get a ticket if they don't, if they violate these laws. And I'm not knocking the police department at all. It's just that you need more enforcement to turn around and do all to do this. We have one more question here, but those that have questions, we're sticking around. These folks, feel free to come to them, ask yeah. a question. Make sure they take down your notes, and if they don't, <laughs> let me know, and we'll have a conversation. So, um. I'm Margaret Brown. I live on Maple Street, and I live on Maple Street. Mm -hmm. And when I drive down Maple Street, first I deal with the bus and then the, um, the medical People are not watching what they're doing when they step out and they walk in the middle of the road. Mm -hmm. And every time I go down Maple Street, I have to be very cautious. Again, as far as Franklin Street, I usually lock my door because people will come out when I'm stopping at a light. And it, it, it's almost like they're going to charge me. And I'm just, some people are not in very good um, medical position, you might say. But I'm just saying, you encounter a lot. It's not a place where I enjoy going. If I'm walking down Maple Street, come back along High Street, I'm likely to have somebody want a um, pen and want money. It's not safe as far as I'm concerned. Thank you. Um, so more questions? You can take over. Mm -hmm. I know you had a question, our friend from the news. If you can, like, just afterwards. Yeah, I'll probably okay. Uh, one comment. I'm, uh, my colleague informed me that I gave you a deadline. I said May 31st. It's March 31st, yeah. please. <laughs> <laughs> because we want to move the project. Yeah. We don't want to wait that long. That's right. So, uh, yes, thank you, everyone. This thank was you. wonderful. So, yeah. what happens now? Where do we so, go? Yeah, so, yeah, stations per mode. Sorry. Yes. Just want to remind everyone. So, the bicycle station is over there. So, there's a paper on the wall. Mm -hmm. If you want to talk about bike accommodations, what you think they should look like, I would head over there. 
pedestrians are in the back of the room. We have transit over here at the first table, and then driving, parking, and loading, similar to business stuff, over in the front. And we're going to move around to yeah. So some of us will stay here, and then others will move.